and welcome to the Business Channel in association with SIBSI, the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers, today looking at innovative engineering and building performance. Buildings account for almost 50% of damaging carbon emissions, yet innovative services design can bring dramatic improvements in energy efficiency. SIBSI members continue to create the most environmentally friendly systems in major projects globally. So what are the innovations that we're seeing in the way that buildings are engineered and which are the solutions which can save energy, create efficiency for clients and lower carbon? Well these days we look at buildings from a different perspective than we used to because of course we have to deal with the issues of energy and climate change. Um, what we're finding now is that the building design is being influenced very much by alternative thinking about how you use spaces but equally how you uh, incorporate new technologies. Uh, new technologies and new materials are having fundamental impacts positively on the way we look at the way people use space and how efficient we can make them to be. Innovative solutions in water management systems can have a significant impact on reducing carbon emissions and increasing building performance. Nalco, which is owned by the US giant Ecolab, is the global leader in water treatment and process improvement technologies. I spoke to their industry technical consultant Simon Atkinson and he told me more. Well, Nalco itself has, has long recognised the inextricable link between good water quality management and the impact that can have on the carbon usage of a, a particular process and the impact on the total cost of operation. It started with Nalco over 80 years ago where we used to provide little chemical treatment briquettes for steam engines and the whole purpose of that was to stop scaling the engines, make sure fuel costs were uh, optimised and minimised, the engines kept running and the railways kept running. So nothing has really changed compared to what we're trying to do today. Although our offerings have expanded greatly, the focus is still reducing the total cost of operation for our customers. And now, Nalco, we've expanded a lot over the, the last uh, eight decades or so. We have 7,000 employees working out in the field globally across 130 countries, working in various water systems across all of our customer sites. Now, what are the products and services that you mainly offer to SIBSI members today? Well, we've long offered SIBSI members accredited training programmes. Um, particularly dealing with the Legionella management issues that we have in our water systems. And this all counts to continuous professional development, CPD. Also, what we can offer SIBSI members is services for um, design, consultancy, installation and backup service for water quality management systems. For example, our 3D Tracer um, programme combines innovative chemistry, equipment, remote access capabilities and services to help optimise our customer water systems. And when we say optimise, it's about minimising water, it's minimising chemical usage and maintaining carbon impact and carbon usage within those systems. And the systems that we can treat with the 3D Trace our platform include cooling towers, steam boilers and raising, a steam raising plant and also membrane systems as well. So can you give me an idea of the kind of applications that your products and services lend themselves to? Yeah, for sure. For example, cooling towers. We know there's an inherent risk with operating cooling towers, but they are still a very efficient way of cooling a building. And our 3D Trace Alpha cooling platform allows us to control water consumption more efficiently, chemical um, consumption more efficiently, and maintaining the efficiency of the plant. And we can see the, the, the system itself controls scale, corrosion, microbiological activity. And for example, if we have a system that's scaled up, even a small amount of scale within that cooling system can dramatically affect the efficiency, which means more power, is consumed more energy, more carbon. So keeping those systems nice and clean, make sure they run efficiently and as carbon friendly as possible. Now what support do you provide after you've sold these products to your customers? Well, every 3D Tracer application has the facility to be web enabled. So the customers can access their systems from wherever they are in the world, as well as the team of Nalco support staff as well. Um, that can uh, support the applications and just make sure that a, alarms are being managed, the systems, any critical issues are being communicated to the customers properly and also there's chance for process optimization, improvement and compliance reports. Because we know that, we said before with the inherent risk in cooling towers for example, that the safety is important so having all this compliance and management data will help show the enforcement people that we're running our systems as safely as we can. Now, a lot of SIBSI members uh, have to think about sustainability targets, and how can Nalco help them with that? Well, the 3D Trace Art platform, since we implemented that, has saved over 2 billion cubic metres of water globally. And this is something that we can bring to our SIBSI members by optimising water, chemical and energy consumption to help meet their sustainability targets. 
Now, what future innovations has Nalco got coming down the line which will help your customers? Well, we can see in the future there's a lot of time and investment being made in the areas of water recycle and reuse. So we can expect new innovative and integrated offerings from Nalco. We spend over $180 million globally on research and development, so we can be sure that we're delivering sustainable solutions for industry well into the future. Well, I think any targets that are about carbon reduction, energy reduction, unfortunately um, are not really achieving what we need to achieve. Um, if we look at the, the global position of global warming, climate change, we're not really achieving our targets. And I'm concerned that any such targets don't really get us to where we need to be. And if I could give some examples, we've seen over the past few years the consumption of coal go up by 47%, which is exactly the opposite of what we need. We've seen that we've already last year, we've hit carbon emissions at 400 parts per million, which again is a target we really didn't want to achieve. And if we look at the target of 2050, for example, in the UK, reduce our carbon emissions by 80% um, by the year 2050, well, we're already in the year 2013, so we haven't got a lot of time left to take on board a big challenge. And I think, to me, what really needs to happen is a more strategic approach, both from government and industry, to really address the broader issues within the nation and the cities within the nations and not be continually constrained by the global perception. Ceramic fuel cells are a world leader in solid oxide fuel cell technology. Their innovative technology BlueGen is the world's most efficient small-scale electricity generator, delivering up to 60% electrical efficiency. At peak efficiency, BlueGen delivers approximately 13,000 kilowatt hours of low emission electricity per year. That's more than enough for the average home. I spoke to their CEO, Bob Kennett. Ceramic Fuel Cells was established about 20 years ago in Australia from the Cicero project. Um, it's developed the technology over those last 20 years and it's primarily based on uh, an oxide technology where natural gas and air are passed through a stack of plates and it produces electricity at very high efficiency together with some heat. Uh, the electrical efficiency is about 60 percent and together with the heat, the overall efficiency of the unit is about 85%. So it is a world leader in, uh, in, in this technology at the moment. Now, they're more suited to some kinds of buildings or sizes of buildings than others? Yeah, the unit sizes currently puts out one and a half kilowatts, which means that it generates over a year about 13,000 kilowatt hours. That's best suited to uh, domestic uh, use or small to medium enterprises or social housing, apartments and that sort of thing or uh, other commercial, uh, small commercial buildings. Now, what kind of, of buildings and SIBSI members do you sell your products into? And do you have any case study examples? The Anvec uh, hair salon in Oxford is a typical example and has uh, solar panels, uh, uh, heat recovery from the, the, obviously the hot water process that uh, she uses and uh, a blue gen uh, fuel cell as well. There's the Maidley Centre up in, in Crewe. There are 10 or 12 units going in there. Uh, the Maidley Centre itself is a, um, a, a social building. It looks after um, uh, elderly people and uh, is a, a fairly new, new project, but um, quite an exciting opportunity because we think that can be replicated throughout the country. Now, do you tend to work on retrofit or new build or both and in particular types of sectors? We can work on, on either new build or, or retrofit. Um, we're looking at social housing uh, properties one unit, for example, can provide power to four apartments and some heat. Uh, we are also talking to organisations about introducing these units into to new build. And as we approach um, the zero carbon target, albeit in, in several decades time, then there is an opportunity to introduce BlueGen to help towards that. We're still carbon based, obviously we're burning natural gas, but the whole point is we're burning it very efficiently. So it helps towards the zero carbon uh, target. We major on the production of electricity as opposed to heat and as new buildings are uh, become much better in, uh, insulated over the years and only electricity is used it fits in very well and the unit can run for every hour of the year it doesn't have to be switched off sim uh, because it isn't producing that much heat it's primarily producing electricity. 
Do you find it's a hard sell or do you find people fall on your product with open arms? When organisations know about it, they get very, very interested. And it's uh, important that we get our brand out, Blue Gen, to make sure that everyone knows uh, what it's about and what the benefits are. Because the whole idea, of course, is to uh, save money on energy bills, to reduce carbon emissions, and to have an efficient and uh, stable production of power. How important is innovation to you? Is this a product that's fairly static where it is, or is it developing further? The, the product has been developed over the last 20 years, so everything that we've done in developing the unit to its current form has been innovative. We have 28, I think it's 28 um, uh, uh, patent families comprising 160 odd individual patents. Uh, so they are all world class leading elements. And uh, that, that's why I think we're ahead of the game. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning is a plethora of different systems you can use these days. And really, my advice to anybody is always go back to your basics and make sure your system selection is right. It's all about system selection. Um, there are so many different types of heating, ventilation system, air conditioning system that you can use these days. It is really about making sure you make the right choice of system and then applying it appropriately to that building so it works as efficiently as possible. Ideal Commercial Heating is the UK's largest manufacturer of high efficiency commercial heating solutions. With over a hundred years experience of manufacturing innovative technologies, it's not surprising that they've recently been recognised for their work in this area. Alan Mason is the Business Development Director and I spoke to him earlier. We're a company that's based in Kingston-upon-Hull and uh, we've been in business in the heating industry for more than 100 years now. Uh, so we pride ourselves in innovation and improving ourselves all the time. And in fact, we've just been uh, recognised for that with uh, the Queen's Award for Innovation, which we got earlier this year in April. So uh, we're very proud of that fact. And uh, we actually supply to all parts of the, of the supply chain, from the consultants to the client, um, and we actually go through distribution networks as well to supply to the contractors. Now we're thinking particularly about innovation today. What are the main innovations that you're seeing in the way that buildings are engineered? I think people now are, are expecting different things from buildings. They're looking at buildings in a different way. Um, before people were just worried about costs and, and things like that, whereas now they're looking at sustainability, uh, they're looking at you know, the green issues. So we have to be conscious of that all the time and um, that's why we like to work closely with SIBSI members to do audits with the energy regulators so that we are looking all the time at um, driving down carbon footprint and environmental issues. Now obviously energy saving is the big thing at the moment but on the other hand we want to cut costs so what are the, the big developments that are happening in your market at the moment? Uh, well, it is our condensing baller technology because it's striking that balance between um, modern technology and innovation um, but also keeping costs down. So what we try and do is, um, is tailor our, our products, like for example our Evamax boiler, a wall hung range, um, with renewables. So if there's any renewables involved in the project, uh, we can tie that into our, our boilers and uh, so the whole project is environmentally friendly. Um, the Evamax in particular is, is good for that because it's got a 5 to 1 turn down ratio. It can be cascaded as well. So We've got a 150 kilowatt individual boiler and uh, that can be put in banks of four which makes an output of 600 kilowatts. But because there's four, you can only bring one or two or three on at a time as the demand requires um, and so that means you're getting the best efficiency and prolonging life of the boiler as well. Now do you work with SIBSI members throughout all different sectors of industry and do you also tend to work on new build or refurb? Both, yes, we actually work with SIBSI members quite a lot and uh, on, on refurb and new build. I mean, uh, particularly some of our, our customers are um, uh, major supermarket chains, banks, um, high street shops, or it can be um, local authority buildings, schools and, and libraries and things like that. So very big, wide range of, of buildings that need heating requirements that we can uh, um, use our products in. And of course, SIBSI members are particularly concerned with reducing carbon footprint and um, environmental issues. So we obviously we try and consult with them whenever we're doing that. There are also other issues, for example, like the plant room itself. Um, sometimes the confines of the plant room are very small, so you need a small footprint boiler to go in there. So we have to take into consideration things like, um, will the boiler go in through a standard doorway, uh, which our IMAX and EVAMOD do. So uh, that also helps them to, to you know, plan the plant room that much better. Now, innovative engineering and building performance are very important concepts nowadays, particularly for SIBSI members. How important is innovation in your sector? 
Very, very important, and of course at Ideal we take that very, very seriously. Um, we do have renewable products like photovoltaic and solar thermal panels, air source heat pumps, but on the boiler side of things, um, we're always looking to improve all the time. As I say, and I mentioned earlier, we did win the, uh, the Queen's Award for Innovation, so that we're very proud of that. We're also um, working very closely with SIBSI members for um, BRIAM because we have um, very low NOx um, output boilers so they can get maximum BRIAM points when they uh, specify ideal boilers. But also we've now put a lot of investment into BIM because we see that as the future. Um, the government are driving BIM. And you also are doing a lot on the R&D side. What we're doing is we're asking customers for feedback all the time. Even though our products are popular at the moment, things move forward. So our R&D are always asking questions of our customers, saying, you know, what do, they, what do they like, what don't they like, what do they need? And so we're constantly developing that. And it is done in our UK base in Hull as well. That's another thing. When SIBSI members do specify our boilers, they're actually using a, a product, because it's based in the UK, that has a minimal carbon footprint. One of the big... Uh, initiatives in the industry is to look at a thing called building information management systems. It's, uh, its acronym being BIM. Now that's a big drive from the government in the UK and BIM is about interoperability of information exchange and putting together a package of information that is fully coordinated uh, before a project hits the site. Now that actually is a very useful way forward in terms of improving the productivity and the efficiency of the delivery process of a construction project. I think that's probably the single biggest initiative. Ormandy Group is one of the leading UK providers of off-site and heat exchange solutions for all commercial and industry sectors. A relatively new idea to the construction industry, designing and manufacturing systems off-site offers a more efficient and sustainable solution than on-site assemblies of component parts. Let's first hear from the commercial director, Murdo MacDonald. The main products that we provide is that we provide an off-site manufactured solution uh, for taking onto uh, an on-site solution of a particular contractor project. And one of the benefits that we find of doing that is that we reduce the amount of time that's actually spent on-site, but more importantly, we're reducing the actual uh, health and safety issues that are normally associated with a major contractor project. So what would a typical job uh, be concerning for you? A um, typical job would be uh, looking at uh, maybe uh, a boiler manufacturing uh, process where we actually take a, a boiler or a heat exchange package uh, off-site uh, and then manufacture it within our factory environment and then bring it back on-site as a complete total solution. What are you finding you're getting most demand for? Uh, one of the things currently is the fact that there's a lack of expertise out there in the field with regards to uh, engineering uh, knowledge and solutions and we're getting asked to look at more and more innovative ways of actually developing uh, some of the total solutions that we can provide as a business. So can you perhaps tell me a case study that you've been involved in? Yeah, we're involved in the Ministry of Defence Aspire contract. Uh, that contract was based in the Salisbury Plain and it required 157 modules to be constructed over a four-year programme. And because of the way in which we were able to put the design package together, it meant that we could actually deliver one a week of these modules. Uh, thereby eliminating a lot of the time on site, but more importantly, reducing the actual overall programme uh, quite considerably. The other case study that we're uh, heavily involved in was the Shard Building in London, which is uh, a very, very prestigious building, and that was actually uh, utilising some of our heat exchange packages and our pump sets, uh, where there was a requirement of 30 units uh, delivered over the whole programme, and thereby uh, we ensured that uh, not only did we meet the strict, strict deadline, but also reduce the actual number of uh, deliveries onto a particular site within the central London area. Now, innovation is very important to SIBSI members. They're always looking for products which deliver more, which are more sustainable and so on. And how important is developing new products to you? I think innovation is very important to any manufacturing or design house. Um, in the case of Ormandy Limited, we are a small privately owned British business um, and we can't lobby government, we don't have any influence with regards to uh, new technologies. But what we can do is identify the application of these new technologies and ensure that we can develop a range of exchanges and equipment that get the best performance out of those. For example, um, where we're now using a lot of uh, inverter driven pumps we have a package heat exchanger package that utilises the full rangeability of the inverters driven on those pumps, rather than just a traditional, oh, we've got all this wonderful technology, we run the pump at a fixed speed and uh, the job's done. We utilise the maximum that we can to afford peak performance and that's a driver for us and we can influence that. 
What do you mainly find is driving your innovation? Is it the regulation or the requirements that you are required to put in, or is it cost? I think it's, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, clearly, commercial aspects are crucially important, and uh, you would be foolish if you thought you could develop a wonderful machine and cost no, no object. Uh, so we have to have a balance between incorporating uh, sustainability and make it commercially viable. And I think we can, we can do a good job of that. Uh, and the, the essence being that the performance on those, the equipment that we offer, makes the best use of the energy that is available. Now, looking more generally at the way that buildings are being engineered, what are some of the main things that are standing out for you in the, the innovations that are coming forward at the moment? I think what we're, look, what we're seeing, and certainly with, within the UK sector, is uh, the use of more efficient uh, primary heat sources. We're seeing geothermal, um, combined heat and power sets, uh, solar units, and it's incorporating these devices into a workable package. Temperature is a primary element here, so if you can design a system or a building where you can utilise low temperatures as, as a primary heat source, then you're already going to have an advantage. And one of the things that we have uh, been in the development of and we can, we can offer is uh, heating panels that are fitted into the linings of walls that operate at, at low temperatures that can make best use of uh, heat pumps and uh, other such sources. So to, to give a background heating rather than the traditional 80 degree C radiator stuck on the wall. So there are lots of options that we can, we can provide for that. One of my hobby horses is the fact that we don't spend enough on research and development. Research and development in terms of technology, in terms of methodology, efficiency. A big thing of mine is building things off site. And I really do believe that, that countries like the UK should be investing more in research and development on how we can put together more cost effective buildings. Now if we look at, come back to what we said about earlier in BIM, part of the strategy with the government is to, on public procured buildings, is to take out 20% of cost. Well, the only way we're going to take out 20% of cost, in my opinion, is to spend more on research and development to get our methodologies and our technologies right. So, for me, I think the way forward is we need to look at how we can fund more research and development. Lighting is a continually changing thing. There's, there's people out there looking for more and more technology within lighting in terms of controls and there are people looking at new ways of lighting, new applications of lighting. So I think lighting is something you always have to keep your eye on because it's always constantly changing. But the most important thing is, it's from our, our point of view as building services engineers, it's one of our ways that we can help to create a great building because lighting is very much akin to the sort of visual look of the building and working with architects on getting the lighting right is a very important aspect. I think we've, what we've really got is that we've got a whole mass of different types of light fittings we can use these days and it's about how you incorporate that into the architect's design that's the exciting part for us. Aurora is a vertically integrated LED lighting company. They have their own manufacturing, distribution and sales organisations and operate globally across eight geographical hubs with the manufacturing located in the UK and France. They provide lighting solutions which contribute to a healthier, sustainable environment. First I spoke to the Group MD Richard Sells about the importance of innovation and the benefits of having their own R&D and in-house manufacturing. Innovation is actually the lifeblood of what we're doing. Aurora started in 1999 as a traditional lighting company and grew very successfully until 2007, 2008, at which point the, uh, the founders looked at the business and said, this, this LED technology is coming into the lighting business and it will totally change what is happening in the lighting industry. And as a result, what they did was they, they, they effectively re-established the business. They took down one business to one tower of business and built a whole new tower of business around the LED lighting um, technologies. Aurora has brought uh, new technologies from the LED um, uh, industry into the lighting space. And part of that, for instance, means we've bought unique thermal management technologies, we've bought unique optical technologies, and we've been able to package lighting in a different way. And that's one of the advantages of being vertically integrated with our own research, development and manufacturing. Now, can you give me any examples or case studies of projects you've worked on? We work across a, a broad remit. We do a lot of our business via wholesale partners, um, and through them we're working with contractors, we're working uh, on um, projects that those contractors are doing, 
Uh, so for instance, we were involved in the lighting for Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Um, we've done a lot of work with McDonald's on their front of house lighting and recently won a contract in the UK for their kitchen lighting as well. So there is a broad remit of, of, of projects that we're, we're involved with, um, ranging from retail, through hospitality, through residential and commercial. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about the products and services that you offer to SIPSI members? We offer the product itself from a manufacturing point of view. So it is from design, research and development in the Far East, um, the manufacturing process, the testing process of the product to make sure that it meets and exceeds the requirements of legislation. And then we offer the design to the client. So it's the solution based part of the process in that we will discuss with the architect, the consultant, the client, to actually produce a lighting design that meets their requirements. And it's getting all of that together so that when the project is put together, the solution, the finished article is exactly what the client is expecting to see. Now, obviously, building services engineers and building professionals, they're always trying to save energy. Now, how do your products work to help them with that goal whilst also maintaining an aesthetic appearance? It's the drive that we're all trying to do. Um, the reduction in energy consumption for the building. So the legislation is driving that forward. So we as a manufacturer are working to research and develop products that maximise energy so that the least amount of energy is being used to create the greatest amount of light. And then it's about controlling that light within the environment so that every bit of the light that we create is of use to the project. Do you have any particular new products uh, coming on stream? The latest new product on the market from Aurora is the M10 uh, recessed fire rated downlight. Um, to describe it, if we take it in two parts, it's the innovation of the product and the installation benefits for the contractor. So if we look at the innovation first, it's a number of processes of innovation. We start off with the crystal cool aluminium disc within the fitting onto which the LED is fixed. And that allows a massive heat dissipation very quickly from the LED, which allows it to run much hotter and remove the heat from it so we get a much more efficient light source. The LED LED croic lens allows the optical performance to be maximized so that we can distribute the light efficiently and still get that halogen look. The fittings fire rated so it can be put into everything from refurbishment of uh, domestic residential buildings into, into applications where fire rating is a requirement. It has the benefit of having insulation being put straight across the top of the fitting. So it will keep itself cool and it won't overheat. Now if we look at the installation point from the contractor's point of view, it has a fast fixed connector. So it means that the installer can, can do the first fix, he can wire up the, the socket and then he can put the luminaire away in a secure position until the building's secure and that he needs to fit it. So all in all, it, it covers all, all the applications, it covers all the bases. One of the things that we're trying to do within SIBSI is to promote engineering in the built environment as a career of choice working with schools, more with the government, getting the message across in a different way. In the past we tended to explain ourselves as people that provide heating and air conditioning systems. The way I like to think as moving forward is people that are providing solutions for buildings that make buildings come to life. It makes the building dynamic. Equally, we look at the energy efficiency of the building and how that can contribute to the important issue of climate change. Especially when you're working with architects, when you're working with lighting systems, you're putting things into a building to make a space come to life for people to use those buildings, to live and play in those buildings. And that's why I enjoy the environment of building services engineering so much. Dow Corning's Building Envelope Technology Architectural Insulation Modules offers building designers and architects a new solution for saving energy whilst maintaining design freedom and aesthetic appeal. First I spoke to the company's Global Marketing Director for High Performance Building Solutions, Jean-Paul Otekir, about silicon technology and how it provides innovative solutions for improved building performance.
Dark Owning is a specialty chemical company. We commercialize product technologies and innovation around silicon. We are about 11,000 employees and we deliver product to more than 25,000 customers on a global basis. Silicon is an amazing, interesting technology. It brings benefit to hundreds of applications in our day-to-day -day life. In many applications, a small amount of silicone can be used to save a significant amount of water to increase the product longevity and improve its life cycle time, as well as increase the uh, overall energy performance. In construction, silicone has been used for decades. We can list structural glazing that allows architects to build seamless glass facades, weatherproofing solutions, sealants and coating, can be used as a barrier for air and water infiltration in buildings and silicone adhesives are used to bond double, triple glass that are being used in windows to improve their thermal performances. Those technologies have been used on many projects across the world. We can list the Burj Khalifa Tower in Dubai, the tallest building in the world, Freedom Tower in New York, and most of the skyline of Shanghai are being made with our products. But more importantly for us, our solutions are being used on thousands of smaller and more specialized projects around the world with one key direction in mind to provide performances and design capability. It's significant that uh, Dow Corning as a material supplier now gets involved in the design of buildings. Uh, we offer integrated solutions and this frees up the architect to consider options very early on in the design stages and at the same time checking their technical feasibility. So Dow Corning is now in a position to work with architects during the conceptual stages of design and offer custom solutions as a means to achieving high architectural quality and high energy performance. High architectural quality is what determines the worth of a building and clearly a building that is worth more is more sustainable. Up to 40% of the energy and carbon are being used, we should say, wasted in erecting and operating buildings. Modern technology can now be used to build uh, buildings that are net zero in terms of uh, energy and carbon footprint. Some of them are even positive. When the world realized that challenge a couple of years ago, it became obvious for us that we could leverage additional silicon technology to help architects and consultants to meet their green building design challenges. So we are developing a portfolio of solutions with a key direction in mind, design and performances. We think design is extremely important because it provides the people comfort, well-being, identity, productivity but at the same time, the architect needs to meet the uh, very severe requirements on energy conservation in buildings. So one of the examples is the architectural insulation model that we are launching this year, a super insulation technologies that basically provide uh, five to 10 times better thermal performance and can be used in facade. The architectural insulation module by Dow Corning is really geared for both the new projects and renovation projects. There are challenges with space constraints as well as meeting new building codes that lend itself for this slender design and high performance. And in new projects, there's increasing energy requirements, increasing facade performance, challenges with window to wall ratio that trade-off decisions can be made, and performance requirements that uh, a thin design with lots of architectural options make it really attractive for, for new construction. But as well, the renovation market has, has interesting design challenges where a slim, high-performing facade element makes a lot of sense. You can imagine that with conventional materials, as you go for high performance, you may end up with fairly thick building envelopes, whereas with a Dow Corning high performance insulation module, you have comparatively thinner building envelopes. In the future, we will continue to leverage our silicon technologies in the field of uh, modern lighting and luminaires, as well as dynamic switchable glazing technologies that can manage on a dynamic basis the amount of heat and light that you want in your home, fully computerized control. 
we believe that if you think buildings in terms of high performance solutions, you may end up with more uh, interesting architecture and ultimately uh, more uh, sustainable buildings. Alumask manufactures and supplies products for the construction industry for both internal and external application. The company is split into two divisions, premium building products and precision engineering. First I spoke to the Divisional Managing Director Gilbert Jackson, who told me about the external drainage products that they offer for the built environment. The external building products division uh, manufactures drainage products for the built environment. We were looking at um, advanced technologies in terms of stormwater management. Uh, we also manufacture facade systems, waterproofing systems, other drainage systems, rainwater systems, and there are a number of internal applications as well. Now, do you mainly work on new build or is it retrofit and refurb? And are there any particular sectors? Is it commercial or is it maybe hospitals or schools? Primarily we're working in the new build area, particularly in the drainage areas, but uh, we do some elements of retrofit as well. We do some uh, high-end commercial work. We also do retail developments, hospitals, schools, uh, basically any type of new building. Well, let's now speak to Andrew Lee, who is Specification Manager with Alumask Rainwater and Drainage. Hello to you. Hello. Now, tell me a little bit more about the products and services that you offer to SIBSI and SOFI members. The products we offer are all drainage related, specifically flat roof drainage, but we have more recently diversified into linear drainage products as well uh, for buried drainage. But the products specifically, rainwater outlets used on flat roof construction and also internal rainwater soil and waste drainage systems in cast iron. And we have a very good relationship with engineers but also with architects because what we do and what we make, there is an interrelationship between engineer and architect. For example, the engineer designs the building drainage. Uh, the architect has the role of ensuring that it fits the building. We have a role to play there where quite often, particularly in situations of tricky detailing, there's a specialist requirement in order to get the drainage to work. And what do you do to help the design process? Our involvement uh, covers several different areas. Uh, we've recently produced a calculator software. This has been particularly successful. That's not to say that engineers don't know how to calculate, but certainly the calculator saves a great deal of time in sizing rainwater, pipework, drainage capacities, in particular different areas of the UK where conditions vary. But we do a lot of listening as well, and we know that web-based information and availability of information from our website is particularly important. In the context of self-help, we find a lot of specification is derived from immediate access to our website, and that is a great help to architects and engineers alike. Well, we're back now with Gilbert, and I'd like to ask you, what innovations do you think that we're going to see in the way that buildings are engineered, say over the next 10 years, with reference to water drainage systems? In 10 years' time, really, we're looking at more amenity for the buildings, use of green space, um, functionality, energy conservation, and lightening the load on the existing infrastructure. So new products are primarily aimed at those uh, ideals, and we're looking at drainage facilities that prevent water flash flooding. So we have a range of harm products that prevent water flash flooding into the system from roofs, attenuation systems on the roof instead of the very expensive alternative which of course is digging into the ground itself. And other items that we supply and install such as green roofs will help use up that water and provide some green living space as well. And what do you think it is that's driving innovation? Is it people are trying to cut costs? Is it sustainability? It's really cost life cycles, so there's a cost element, of course, to every new product development, but the demand from the end client, the engineers, Sophie and Sibsi, they're looking for us to come up with systems that are looking to give that whole life cost stability in their design system and to enable them to design a building that's going to be functional for its use and also to create a more enhanced living atmosphere. Whole life thinking is embracing the whole issue of how we can make buildings perform better uh, right now and into the future, addressing issues like the threat of climate change, um, urban um, heat island effects in cities that we're seeing uh, increasing year on year, 
we're looking at how you can make buildings more adaptable and really the whole concept of adaptation of buildings over time to deal with the challenges of energy security, energy cost increases and the impact of climate change. So it takes on board economics, it takes on board design, but on what we're trying to do is to get the disciplines within the built environment to work together in a more integrated way so that things like landscaping, architecture, structure, uh, mechanical and electrical engineering systems can all work together more efficiently in the future and also to make buildings more maintainable and more usable so that they're more resilient to the challenges that are coming down the line in the next 10 to 20 years. Tech Reline was formed by Chimney Care, who've been lining chimneys for nearly 20 years, to develop the business into commercial lining products for ducts, pipes and chimneys. Their revolutionary lining system, Furanflex, increases boiler efficiency and reduces gas consumption and is particularly used in the retrofit market because its installation requires no demolition. I spoke to the technical director, David Fleming, who told me more. Furanflex is a glass fibre reinforced thermal setting resin. It's two types, one for solid fuel and one for oil and gas. It comes as a, a flat tube, it's installed inside the chimney, inflated with air and then it's steamed. And once the temperature of the liner reaches 100 degrees C, same temperature as the steam, it sets harder than steel. It will mould to the existing chimney or duct, whatever you're putting it into, so you don't lose much cross-sectional area. You also improve the efficiency of the duct because it's a smooth inside lining. Do you have any case study examples of projects you've worked on? Yes, certainly recently we've done a lot of U-ducts, which are communal chimneys generally in blocks of flats. So all the boilers are balanced flue boilers that connect to the same duct and it's, as it says, a U-shape. It brings air down one side and it exhausts and feeds the boilers on the other side. The problem with U-ducts is the only way to repair them until we had the Fiorum Flex was to pull them out and replace them. Unfortunately that means disruption to all the flats, no heating for a long time and with the Fjordan Flex the duct can generally be done in a couple of days and the boilers are back and working again. We also lined uh, some chimneys at Westminster University. Uh, the problem there was the, the new boiler plant required a 600 diameter lining. The chimneys were only 350 millimetres by 700 millimetres we installed Fjordenflex in there, which rather than being round, just went oval, allowed the new boiler plant to be fitted, which meant that they reduced their heating costs. Now, do you tend to work on new build or retrofit and refurb, and are there any particular sectors like hospitals or schools that you work on? We've lined both new build and retrofit. Most of our work comes from retrofit because new build tend to be lined as they're being built. In the retrofit sector, we've lined schools, hospitals, office blocks, chemical cabinet ducts at universities. We've lined pipe work where it's installed inside the building, so it makes it very difficult to replace. And we work across many different projects and types of buildings. If we look at innovation, you know, new products and services, I mean, is sort of linings a very static thing? Are we still lining chimneys the same way we did 50 years ago? Or is it something that's really moving forward and you're bringing lots of innovative products? The chimney lining trade is a growing trade, especially domestically. But unfortunately, people aren't moving on and are still using the same products they used 20, 30 years ago, stainless steel, which is more a repair than a permanent fix. We are constantly on the lookout for new products. Uh, innovative and time-saving products to try and keep our customers supplied with what they need in the time scales they need them. The, the Fiorum Flex really gives a short installation period, generally one day, and also doesn't cause any disruption. We only need access to each end of whatever we're lining, rather than having to cut holes in to actually get the liners through. You've spoken about the Fiorum Flex. Do you have any new products or services in the pipeline, as it were? We are looking at the moment at bringing in a composite chimney, uh, which will be ideal for new build where they're putting in district heating and power. It'll save the costs of putting a mast up to support a stainless steel chimney because it will be self-supporting. So again, it will save time and money in installing the new chimneys. We're also looking at a new insulating board, which is again a composite board, 
which has been used in the military, in hospitals, in hotels, uh, for fireproofing doors. It's very lightweight, yet has a very, very good fire resistance. Sibji really is changing. Um, it's moving to a more thought leadership role. What we're trying to do is we're trying to give engineers and others outside the engineering profession a home to come to where they can share ideas, share their experiences, share their knowledge in a non-controversial, safe environment which the industry can then learn from. I think also the other thing that Sibji is moving forward on is the whole idea of knowledge management, making knowledge much more fingertip accessible to the engineers that are practicing out there around the globe. Because of course we are an international organisation and we have to bear in mind that internationally people are seeking more and more knowledge. And I think SIBSI is a creation of that knowledge and a place where people can also impart their own learning and knowledge. So I think it's, it's about how we can collectively bring together the capabilities and learning across the globe into our knowledge management process that then is accessible by all our members. So as we've seen today, innovation happens all along the supply chain, from the design stage throughout production, implementation and maintenance. They're all key to delivering more for less. And SIPSI members are at the heart of this drive to develop innovative solutions like the ones we've featured today to achieve optimal building performance. Well, that's all we've got time for now, but if you'd like to know more about any of the organisations that we've featured, then visit our website, thebusinesschannel.tv. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>